And I hope that I will um, inspire you to share the stories I'm telling you today, uh, that I'll be telling you. Um, and I think I'm going to start with how we carry our childhood with us as we travel through life. We don't realize this, but it's always there. And even as we get further and further away from our childhood, if we are attentive and alert and mindful and, you know, looking out of the corner of our eye, squinting a bit, we get glimpses of our childhood. We can still experience moments of wonder or a fleeting glimpse of the emotional quality of childhood. This would be one of my fleeting glimpses of childhood. I think it's, to me, really important for those of us who um, connect with children, who work with children, who share stories, to keep that connection with childhood because it really helps us uh, to understand the way their minds work, how they are always on the border of reality and fantasy, how you can see children go from real life to real life action to all of a sudden they become I don't know, superheroes or, or monsters or they see things or they, they're listening to us. You know when you have kids in your class that are listening to you and they go off on one word somewhere else. They come back 15 minutes later. <laughs> they missed this much of what you were saying. Well, that's the kids I'm writing stories for because I know that they're going to take some of my words, some of my images, and travel with them elsewhere. We'll come back eventually, but that's something that we can carry with us through our life, through the power of stories. Often these memories that we as adults have, memories and moments, emerge and surprise us without warning, triggered by a variety of sensory events. Okay, for example, in my, in my case, certain smells like hot asphalt, warm sand, salty sea air, eucalyptus trees, fresh cut grass, uh, wet dog fur, certain smells throw me headlong into the rabbit hole of childhood. Have you ever noticed that? There's, you go by, you smell something, a tree, a grass, like I say, and all of a sudden, you become very small and young and there are moments, memories attached to that. Or, for example, if I see, um, for me, if I see a fat, furry, striped caterpillar. If you look at my books, you can count the caterpillars in my book, and they're always the same type. If I see one now as an adult, I remember the wonder I felt as it walked softly, almost weightlessly, on my open palm. So I guess in this drawing, in uh, Read Me a Story, Stella, Sam is doing the same thing. If I lie down in a field of wildflowers and tall wheatgrass, I remember how I used to have the power of becoming invisible, invisible in my own world. Do you see kids that think they are invisible? I see a lot of them doing things that they shouldn't be doing, doing things behind their desk, behind a tree. Oh, I'm hiding, but we see them. There's something that happens in your mind when you're a child. You, tra you, tr you, you cross that border and you can become invisible. And I like, for me, it's important to remember that when I'm writing or when I'm uh, talking with children.